just wanted to uh, spend a few minutes just to walk through the reason for the season Christmas. You know, the moment we say Christmas, the first thing that comes to our mind is that it is uh, Santa Claus. Uh, many of you would think about Santa Claus. Some of us would think that back in India at least that we would all buy new clothes. So it's new clothes for us. We would just buy new clothes in the morning. And some of us would think about firecrackers in the morning. So we get up in the morning back in India at 4 o'clock. We would go to the church at 4 a.m. That's how our church happens uh, in, on Christmas Day. And we would just finish our services and come back at 7 a.m. and we would fire crackers all over the, in the, in the street. And then we would just uh, take some really good sweets. And we go visit every one of our neighbors. We share sweets to them all to share our joy, showing off our new dress that we have on. So that's how we celebrate Christmas back in India, at least when I grew up, where I grew up from. And here in the U.S. is different. Christmas is Santa Claus. It's about gifts under the Christmas tree. It's about Black Friday. It's about going out and getting Cyber Monday gifts for everyone. So that is exactly what Christmas is. It's all very commercialized. That people have really forgotten the real reason for the season Christmas, why Christmas is. And it is so much has gone lost as a meaning here in the society that we live in that I heard once someone explain, exclaim, what does the church have to do with Christmas? Because people think that, that Christmas is just a you know, joyful thing to celebrate, which is really true. But the real reason for the season is that Jesus Christ came into this world as a small child to die for our sins and that is the reason why we celebrate Christmas. So I just want to take a few moments to just uh, think about that reason, the core reason for why Jesus Christ came into this world, this world for us so that it is a meaningful evening for us as we celebrate Christmas. Not only the gifts, not only the food, not only new dress, and not only the great merrymaking, but it is much more than that. That is the Christmas message. The Bible talks about a particular reason for re the, the season why, why Jesus Christ came. In the book of Isaiah and the Bible, in verse chapter 50, 59, verse 20, the prophet Isaiah is saying, the Redeemer will come to Zion. And to those who turn from transgressions in Jacob, says the Lord. It is talking about a Redeemer who would come to those who would change, who would turn away from transgressions. That is the Bible verse that says about Jesus Christ to come upon this world. And if you think about that deeply, this particular verse is a proclamation or an announcement that is given to the whole mankind. In Hindi it says, Jo aprath se man firate se unke liye Siyon mein ek chudane wala aayega. A chudane wale aayega. A deliverer will come. A redeemer will come. Someone who delivers his people. A savior would come. And um, it may be an ordinary verse for us to think about, but the, the magnitude of this particular announcement is that this announcement was given about 700 years before Jesus Christ was to be born in this world. If you think about a royal decree, if the kings, when they make a decree, when something is important happening, they would basically send people who would uh, just do bands, what they call the bands. And back home when I was growing up, at times they would, they would come with a, a little um, peon or the clerk of the, of the government. He would come to the, the street end and he would just um, uh, you know, play a drum loudly. And he would say, hear ye, hear ye. And he would give an announcement. Has, has anyone here heard that at all? And nowadays we all receive email messages. That's how we receive announcements. In those days it was not like that. They would send a messenger, a messenger who would come, who would just uh, make some loud noise and they would just declare something the government is going to do, something that was to happen. So that is a very, very important thing. Everyone would just come and listen. I remember when I was a little child, I used to just come to the house of, at the door. I would listen to this, this man who would just give the message of the government. And here, if you see, God himself is giving a message, a proclamation that a deliverer, a redeemer was going to be born in this world. And that to 700 years before it was to happen. And that has got to pass us, start us to think about exactly why God would make such a proclamation, an extravagant proclamation about something, about a little child who was going to be born 700 years later. But this is not the only one place that this particular proclamation is given. We see in a book called Micah, chapter 5, verse 2, about 600 years before Jesus Christ was born, where he repeats the same particular prophecy, where God would say, said that this redeemer is going to come from Bethlehem. More specifically, exactly where he was going to be born. Again, 600 years before Jesus Christ was to be born. So there is a significance to Christmas, the day Jesus Christ was born in this world that, that we are right now remembering and declaring and we're celebrating. And as we saw in the play, that message 
of Jesus' birth was even given with even a large extravaganza for the little shepherds. They were in, in Bethlehem, they were minding the sheep and suddenly a host of angels, a group of angels suddenly appeared and they started to sing the praises of God and an angel Gabriel gave a proclamation saying that behold, I give you a good news of great joy to all people. Today is born for you a savior in Bethlehem. You'll see this little boy lying in the manger with swaddling clothes. Nobody would be born in a manger. No one would go to a manger to see where a baby was born. But a specific sign was given because God declared where his child Jesus Christ was born as a savior in this world. That is why Christmas is important. That God proclaimed, he proclaimed again, he repeated again, and he announced when Jesus Christ was born as a child on the, in the womb of a virgin Mary. But why did Jesus have to come? What is the point of Jesus, Jesus coming into this world? Why, why, what does it mean to us? I just want to touch on three things why Jesus came into this world that we can be rejoicing in that. Jesus talked about many different things about why he came into this world. The Bible says that Jesus said, the son of man has come to seek and to save that which was lost. That was the purpose for Jesus coming into this world. He came to seek and to save that which was lost. I don't know how many of you have played hide and seek as a little child. You know, we all like to hide. When we hide, people have different kind of uh, thinkings about how they want to hide. Some children want to go hide. They want to be found quickly. They just hide very, very close so that they're not really far away from their friends. They purposely make sure that they could be found quickly. And there are some who would go and hide in a very difficult place. They don't want to be the first one to be found. They want to just be far away. Hey, let somebody else be the scapegoat first. But there are others who play to win. They want to hide so that nobody can find them. Nobody could find them at all. Imagine that you are hiding in a hide and seek. No one came looking for you. You are waiting there for 20 minutes, 30 minutes, 40 minutes, and no one came looking for you because everyone gave up. They thought that, well, perhaps he's not playing anymore. She's not playing anymore. She went home. He went home. So nobody started looking for you. When you come out and realize that no one is looking for you, no one is seeking you, just imagine that mental trauma that you'd go through. That is exactly what happened a few years ago. A group of school kids, they went down to play, and this boy and a girl, they went and hid themselves in a very nice place. And the friends were looking, looking, looking. They could not find them at all. Everyone gave up. They all went home. And the two kids who were hiding came out only to find out that it's like pitch dark. They did not know what to do. They were really scared out of their wits. Finally, they went, found their friends. They're all getting ready for dinner. They said, we thought that you went home. But Jesus Christ came into this world to seek and save that which was lost. It is a game of hide and seek much like that that happened at the beginning of the ages. When Jesus, when the Lord created, God created heaven and the earth, he created one man, Adam, and one woman, Eve. He gave them all control over a garden called Garden of Eden. He said that you can eat anything that you want. You can enjoy your life except for this one particular tree that you cannot eat of that. But when they disobeyed that one commandment because of the trick of Satan, they fell away from the grace of God. They started to be afraid. They wanted to hide and run away from him. Imagine that you did something really bad as a child, that your dad disappeared, disapproved. What would you do? Before dad comes home, we just go hide. That's what we used to do. Our dad was a very strict person. So before he came, he came home, we would make sure that every scissor was placed exactly where it was found. Every piece of pen was exactly where it was. And if we had done something wrong, we would just make sure that we had not seen the first as he came home. That's what we used to do. That's exactly what Adam and Eve did. They went and they hid themselves. And the Lord came back into this garden looking for the man. The man was afraid because they had done something wrong. But God, in his mercy, was coming looking for the man. He was asking, Adam, Adam, where are you? Just imagine that you are hiding and there is a God who is seeking you. God is saying, Adam, where are you? Adam was afraid. He said that I am afraid because I am naked, so I am hiding myself. And God asked him, who told you you are naked? Did you eat of the tree that I asked you not to eat? That is when 
his mind zero open. At that time, he realized that he was in a sinful life. And because of the sin, the sin has been perpetuated generation after generation after generation. It was very clear that man can never come into the presence of the most holy God. Because God had banished him from the garden. He said, you cannot be in my presence except if it was initiated by God himself. And that is exactly the point of why Jesus came into this world. Jesus said, I came to seek and to save that which was lost. When Jesus came, he gave many parables about the kingdom of God. First of all, he said a parable about a man who had a hundred sheep. One of them was lost. This shepherd would just go, leaving all the 99 sheep in the wilderness, going looking for that one that was lost. When he had found that, he would carry that lamb that was lost on his shoulder. He'd come home and call everyone, come and rejoice with me, I found my sheep. That was missing. That was such a joy for him. God said that that is exactly like the kingdom of God when a sinner who was lost, gone away from the presence of God because of their sin, has been found and brought back in reconciliation with God. That is the reason Jesus came. Jesus did not stop with the one particular parable. He went on to talk about this, this message of being lost and being found. He talked about a woman. She had 10 coins. One of that was lost. She would not rest at all. She would lit up the lamp. She would sweep the entire house very carefully until she found that one coin. Now, if you look at that, in the first parable that Jesus gave, one out of a hundred was lost, one percent loss, but the shepherd was able to find it. In this particular example, this parable, this woman lost one out of a ten, a ten percent, and she was able to find it, and she rejoiced with all her neighbors. And Jesus went on to talk about a third parable. He said that a man had two, two sons. Out of them, the younger son said to the father, Father, give me of the wealth that you have, my portion. I want my portion. And he collected all his belongings, all his inheritance. He went away from the father. He ran away from home, hiding away from the father. There he wasted all his wealth. He lived according to whatever he wanted to do. He thought that nobody can see him. But a time came when everything was spent. There's nothing left in his hand at all. And it was scarcity that he was not even able to eat the food that was given to the swine. He came to his senses. He said that in my father's house, there are many, many servants. Everyone have everything good to eat. But I am here dying of hunger. I will go to my father. I'll go tell him, father, I'm not worthy to be called your son anymore. Please accept me as one of, my, one of your servants. Saying that, he came back to the father. The man who went there with the so pompous dress is coming with rags. The man who went with all the riches came back with nothing. The man who went with the welcomed hair is now coming. But no one can understand and identify it is the same man. His son is coming, thinking that his father would not even allow him to come into the house. But his father was waiting for him with compassion. He saw this man coming from the distance. He probably thought that was my son. He looks my son, like, like, like my son. He said, no, my son does not like that. He's nicer looking. He's more handsome. As he draws closer, the man looks. No, he's walking like my son. He must be my son. Kept looking. As this boy was walking, this father recognized it is his son. He was not waiting. He came running to him, embracing him. I said, welcome home, my son. You are lost, but now you are back. I thought you were dead, but you are now back alive, alive again. He called all the friends and neighbors. He gave a very expensive ring for him. He gave him brand new sandals. He gave him new clothes and invited him back as a son again. That is the purpose of Jesus Christ coming back into this world, to find, to seek that which was lost, to restore that relationship back again. I want to ask you this, morning, this evening, where are you in your spiritual journey? Are you seeking? Everyone is either hiding or they have just been found or they want to be found. They're seeking. Today, this evening, the message of Christmas is that Jesus Christ came. You are not worthless. It's not that no one is looking for you. That is someone who is looking for you. That is the God who has love for you. That is the Father who loves you, who is looking for you. This evening, that is the message of Christmas. He came to seek and to save that which was lost. A story was told about a boy who ran away from his home. His uh, widowed mom 
did not know what happened he ran away from home many years he did not even write or did not do anything at all he just ran away after many years he came to a different part of his life and then he started to think about his mom part of him said that i got to go back to my mom another part said that oh, she would not even accept you anymore you have just abandoned her why would he she accept you this boy decided to give it one try and he wrote a letter to her In that letter he said mom i don't know what you are doing i want to come home but i don't know if you would ever accept me at all if you don't accept me i understand because i was the one who was wrong but if you do accept me i want to come for you on this particular day i'm going to come on the train the only one train that comes to our town and outside the, the railway station i used to play as a little child there's a large tree there if you would accept me raise up a white flag for me on that tree i'll come on the train if i see that flag i'll come down i'll get down in that station and come and see you if there is no flag at all i will just continue on my journey and i will not bother you anymore that is what the letter read the day came the sun was on the train he was coming his heart was pounding will there be a flag will there be a flag at all or not he was looking he was waiting part of him was saying that there must be a flag and he was saying that what if she rejected if she rejected me what if she did not raise up a flag what if she was not able to raise up a flag what if she was so old now she is not able to climb the tree oh what a idiotic idiotic thing that i have done asking for a flag not knowing that whether she could go up on the tree to put up a uh, flag for me all these questions were going on in his heart and the train came to the town as he looked at the window he saw this tree staying there with a hundred flags all over raised up not one tree one flag but a hundred flags the mom said i want to make sure you never miss my love for you if i put one flag maybe you will miss it if i put a hundred flags you will never miss that dearly beloved that is exactly what god is doing for you for me when we do a hundred mistakes god shows his love 100 times we do 1000 mistakes god shows his love 1000 times and that is the banner of his love that is upon us that is the reason jesus came to seek and to save that which was lost this evening it is very simple for you to come back to the lord if you say lord i want to come back to you all you have to say is that jesus i accept you i want to come to you and immediately he will allow you to come into your life so that you will be blessed indeed so that you are restored back to who the relationship with him secondly why did jesus came he came to save seek and save that which was lost but he also came according to his statement he said that i came so that i give them life and have it more abundantly we all may think that we are alive but the bible says the wages of sin are death small sin or large sin it is death it is not that we are just going to fall down die that is not what the bible believe bible says but when we have sinned when we come into this end of our life in this world whatever day that is the god has appointed that is an eternity that eternity is what the bible is talking about in that eternity without god without anyone for us at all that will be in the hell that is the bible that is the death that bible is talking about but god is saying that jesus is saying i came so that they may have life and life more abundantly not just ordinary life but life more abundantly not only in the eternity to come but in this world in this world god wants to give an abundance of his blessing upon us the bible says jesus became poor so that we can be rich in his poorness in his poverty the bible says that he he became he lost all his clothes as he was hung upon the cross because he wanted to keep our dignity so that he carried all our shame all our sorrows in his own body as he died upon the cross for us as a sacrifice for all our sins the punishment that was due for our sins was upon him and he came when he we accept that grace that was given to us upon the cross by the lord jesus christ he will come into our lives and bless us with eternal life and that is the life that god is talking about not only that we don't have to wait for the for the for the next eternity to come even in this world it is god jesus christ is the one who brings abundance there was a fisherman by name simon who had an empty boat he was toiling all night but he was not able to catch a single fish when jesus came into that boat 
He said simply, Simon, push your boat towards the deep and cast your net and you will be able to find. He wasn't able to believe, but he obeyed that word. When he obeyed that, immediately he was able to catch a large catch of fish that he was not able to be able to hold that in the boat. If Jesus Christ comes into our lives, he is the one who fills us with all abundance. It is our prayer that the message of Christmas is the abundance of the Lord Jesus Christ, the life of abundance that God is giving us that becomes a blessing for all of us this evening. Finally, Jesus came into this world to destroy the works of the devil. The Bible says there is an enemy for us. The devil is working in all different ways so that he can come against us in many different ways. And there is one God who can destroy all the works of the devil in our life. And we see that many ways Jesus Christ, when he comes in there, he touches lives and transforms them and he blesses them in so many ways. The Bible talks about an incident when Jesus Christ was in this world. There was a man who came to the Lord Jesus Christ and he said that my son has been tormented by an evil spirit. This evil spirit is occupying him, he's possessing him, pushing him into the water, into the fire. You had to do something for us. Jesus was able to just with a word heal that boy and cast out the demon. Even today, that is the reason Jesus Christ came into this world to bring us into abundance. He wants to bless us so that we can come in there and glorify the name of the Lord when he comes into our lives so that every form of impediment of the um, demonic occurrences will be gone. I've heard many different stories I've seen in my experience as well as people are coming there with very small things that we do in our hearts but it becomes it opens a stronghold for the enemy to come in there. It could be a habit or it could be a lie or it could be a wrath that we have against someone. It is an unforgiveness that we have someone or pride that we have in our lives. These are small things that we are thinking but when we do anything at all that is not pleasing God, when we allow that in our heart, the enemy takes that as an occasion and he comes into our lives and he does not leave at all. The Bible says that when an evil spirit comes out of a man and goes into many places and it dry places and he's not able to find another thing, he'll come back with even stronger spirits that they will occupy this man and this man's life will be a miserable life. That is what Jesus talked about. Even today, the promise of the Lord Jesus Christ is that he is here to destroy the works of the devil. There are many places that I've seen that people who are tormented by the devil People you know, are in bondages of witchcraft and sorcery. They have been set free by the power of the, Je of the Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus came into this world so that we can live a life that is free. There was a man of God who I know, he got out to be with the Lord now. Once he went to a place in Tamil Nadu to preach the word. As he preached the word, in the daytime he would just stay in his home and he would wait for the meeting to come uh, happen in the evening. And one day suddenly there was a knock on the door and somebody came in there, it was a um, father and mother with a little child, a little girl, a young girl. They said that this girl has been tormented by stomach pain, you had to do something about, about that. And uh, the man of God, the preacher said that, well, let's pray for her. And he gave an oil, some oil to the mother. I said, you apply that on her stomach, I say pray for her. And the mother, as she applied the oil, the mother was thrown away as if she was uh, hit by an electric shock. She was not able to touch the, the, the daughter's um, stomach. And then he told the, the father to do that. The father was also not able to touch the, uh, the, the daughter's uh, stomach. She was thrown back as well. And then this man of God, he applied the oil and prayed. And immediately this girl vomited what appeared to be blades and little bit brass plates. And all of those, all the witchcraft came out of her body. And she was totally healed completely. Co completely healed. And um, about an hour or so after they are gone, there was a knock again on the door. When the door was opened, he saw this man who looked like um, a sorcerer, a witch doctor. And he said that, I had done the witchcraft on this girl and you have broken that. Now I give you one, one last chance. By tonight, seven o'clock, if you don't run away from this town, you will fall down, die as you stay for prayer, praying before all the people. That is his, that is the command, that, that's the challenge that he gave to this man of God. That is how the enemy works. He always comes and tries to possess people and blackmail people. And this man of God did not know what to do as he was standing there praying and thinking what is going to happen, what is going to happen and they started a scene and a meeting was happening at 7 o'clock came and he did not know what to do. He went up on, this, on the stage. There was a big commotion in the crowd and people said that there's a man who collapsed and they asked him to, uh, to pray for this man and they brought this man it was exactly the same witch doctor who had challenged him in the morning was now paralyzed, not able to move his hands and legs. He was brought forward for, for prayer. As he was prayed, he was completely healed and God touched him and changed a life over there. That is how Jesus works. He can set free from every, every torment of the devil. This evening, the message of Christmas is that he has come into this world to save, to seek and save that which was lost. 
Jesus came into this world to give us life and life abundantly. And he has come into this world to destroy the works of the devil. It is our prayer that this evening that God would grant the blessings of Christmas in your life. It's not just a day of celebration, a day of exchanging gifts, which is all good. We have to just celebrate and have fun, have a joy. But more than all of that, when Jesus comes into our life, when he restores our life from being lost and being, to being restored, when he comes into our life and blesses with abundance, when he comes into our lives and grants us deliverance from all the power of the enemy, that is when we have the real joy. When Jesus came into this world, Mary and Joseph had gone to Bethlehem where Mary was about to give birth to the child. But there was no place in the inn for him at all. A child is not born in a manger. A child is born in an inn or a place, a house. But there was no place for Jesus Christ at all. But when Jesus Christ came into this world, the Bible says that because he came into his own, his own did not accept him. As we remember this Christmas, the one question that's placed before us is that, is there room for Christ, this Jesus Christ in our life? He's not again going to be born in a manger. He's not going to be again born in a place that does not belong to anyone. But he wants to be born in our life, in our heart. In India, when we celebrate Christmas, we do one thing. We light up a star in front of our house. Even here also we have many star lights, but we don't quite think about exactly why that is. The reason why we light up a star in front of our house is to indicate that Jesus Christ is indeed born in our house, is born in our house. That is why we light up a star. This evening, let's ask ourselves another question, is Jesus Christ born in my home, in my family, in my heart? If not, I invite Jesus Christ into my life so that I will have this experience of Christmas in my life so that I can have the fullness of the Lord's joy, fullness of his joy, peace, fullness of his blessings, that I will be restored in my life that every power of the enemy will be broken in my life. Let's all stand up together. For a moment, I want to pray for every one of our lives so that God will make us a blessing in this day that will be a day, a real Christmas in our life, a real Christmas in our family. And if you would just, all you need to do is to just agree with me as I pray. And this evening, God would help you to really have the joy of Christmas in your life. Does anyone here who says, I want this Jesus to be born in my life. I want to reconcile with him. I want to just believe that he is the one who can give me the full peace, full joy, that he can bring me back to my relationship with God. I have not had this relationship with him so far, but I want to invite him into my life. If that is your prayer, would you slip up your hand? I want to pray with you with all eyes closed and all heads bowed. God bless you. 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 It's a simple act of faith, asking God, God, come into my life. As we pray, we know that he will come into your life to bless you before I close. God bless you. God bless you. Is there anyone last? Father, we thank you. We thank you for everyone, O oh, Father God, who has believed you this evening, O oh, Lord. We pray, O oh, Father God, that you would restore, O oh, Lord, love and joy and peace in their hearts, O oh, Father God, the abundance that you promised, O oh, Father. We pray, O oh, Father God, the lives that are lost, O oh, Father, shall be restored. We found, O oh, Father God, because that is the reason why you came into this world, O oh, Father. We believe, O oh, Father God, that this evening, that you would bless your children, O oh, Father. Lord, right now I command, O oh, Father God, every power of the enemy, O oh, Father, to be broken in their lives, O oh, Father God. Lord, I stand against, O oh, Father God, the anger, O oh, Father God, that is breaking families, O oh, Father God. Husband and wife, O oh, wife, oh, Father God, with no peace, O oh, Father God. With, oh, Father God, even physical altercation, oh, Father God, that is happening in families, oh, Father, in Jesus' name, I pray today as they believe that there shall be peace in their family, oh, Lord. Lord, I pray, oh, Father God, every spirit of anger, oh, Father God, shall leave, oh, Father God, every, every spirit of wrath will leave, oh, Father God. Forgiveness and peace and joy will be in their hearts, oh, Father God. Everyone who believes in you, oh, Father God, for deliverance, I pray today, oh, Father God, they shall receive that deliverance, oh, Father. I stand against, oh, Father God, every mental confusion, oh, Father God, Every form, O oh, Father God, of discouragement, O oh, Father God, depression, O oh, Father. I pray in Jesus' name it shall be broken, O oh, Lord, so that your children will be blessed, O oh, Father God, with the joy of Christmas. We thank you, Father, for you going to do that. We believe, O oh, Father God, you came into this world to die for us, for every one of us individually, O oh, Father God, and we thank you for your love and for your grace and for your peace. We thank you, Lord, for giving us the joy of Christmas today. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen and amen.